Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone. Today we are having a podcast on uh, extraterrestrials and uh, everything about them like what would they be like or who they are or whether they are there or they're not there or are we alone. So let's begin. So, way back in 1977, NASA, dealing with similar set of questions, decided to send a space traveling probe that was supposed to travel to the unknown depths of our universe or whatever little we knew about it back then. They named it Voyager. Somewhere in the back of their minds, they were really hoping that they would finally get an answer to the age-old burning question, are we alone? And if there indeed was or is anyone out there, how do we communicate with them? Hence, the engineers came up with an idea of recording sounds and images of Earth onto two golden disks, one of which you can see on the screen right now, which, if discovered by someone out there, would help them get familiarized with us. And this would only happen if that someone else was equally or superior in intelligence. But why this fascination about finding out if there really exists any other intelligent enough civilization or species out there? Humankind, as we all know, since eternity, especially after we tamed fire, has been consistently rewarded for its inherently curious nature. Men and women have never ceased to be pioneers. Exploring things and breaking boundaries to conquer new territories is in our very DNA. I hope you agree with that. Yes. Libido dominandi as they say in Latin. Every one of us who grew up watching movies and binging on TV shows has had this unwavering urge to find out how would aliens look like and if there, were, if there ever was a contact between them and us, what language would they speak? Well, if you were a Hollywood movies fan, that language would definitely seem to be phonetic. But no one knows for sure. Also, what else no one knows is how they would look like. If one has to look at the image that is depicted here on this screen, this is what most of us think aliens would look like. Do you agree, Julian? Oh, he looks handsome. Uh, according to me, he looks quite dashing. Nice color on his face and all that. In popular culture, most of the people think the first thing that comes to their mind when they when we hear alien or from the movies, we feel someone like a humanoid shape with two eyes and uh, a neck and a head kind of a thing. Mm, pretty cool. Well, most of us almost assume that aliens may look like us but not look like us as in they would have hands, limbs and a mouth to feed their bodies so that is what people in Hollywood movies depict like but then we are not really sure about what their actual appearance may be like they could be microscopic Yeah. yeah. they could be huge yeah, they could yeah. be you know they could be something that we are not familiar with already so mm. there is hardly any real proof or real data on which a lot of us could agree upon uh, as how the aliens would look like. So it might be like an octopus also. Could be like the in the movie Arrival. <laughs> could be, could be, and they could be eating each other. They could be you know cannibals. Yeah. yeah. Or whatever. Like we never know, and we have no real idea about uh, if there exists a civilization similar to us or a much superior civilization to us out there. But can you just tell me as to what are the conditions or the criteria or kind of environment wherein, you know, such a civilization may exist or, you know, what are this? There has to be some uh, suitable condition for such a civilization to live and thrive. So can you yes, just yes, throw yes. a little bit of light on that? So there's a term for this. It's called the Goldilocks zone. And it is uh, a habitable zone, like the habitable zone around a star is designated as, as the Goldilocks zone. It, uh, our Earth falls into the Goldilocks zone and hence we observe life, the phenomena of life on Earth. Uh, 
so similarly in uh, uh, extra uh, terrestrial planets or in extra terrestrial zone if there is a planet the probability of life uh, evolving on that planet is expo- is much much higher than uh, the zone other than the goldilocks zone so what you are telling is for life to exist there needs to be some source of energy yes definitely and for us that energy we derive from sun yes and whatever we know of is basically you know photosynthesis is the basic process through which uh, life is uh, food is created yes, the, the, yes. The, basically the plants produce their food through photosynthesis and exhale oxygen in that process indirectly or directly each and every life form derives uh, its uh, existence or owes its existence to the sun to the sun and uh, even fungi or even uh, bacteria in the thermal vents of the oceans and all those kind of things so god forbid if the sun didn't exist <laughs> we won't exist yeah yeah that so is that obvious. is what you're telling yes yes when you see that uh, there is to, there is this goldilocks zone so that is what you mean by yes. goldilocks zone. yes yes so you need to be in uh, some amount of proximity to a source of energy yes which is not too far away from the source of energy and which is not too close to the yes, source yes. of energy and so the source of energy also should be uh, a certain amount only it cannot be very big star or very small star okay so that star is basically which makes the planet revolve around it due to gravity yeah and through which so is there like some limit to the amount of revolutions a planet can have or whatever it is or it's just that the, if you can survive in a goldilocks zone it is uh, possible the, the light life can exist yes there. possibility increases exponentially okay okay so if there ever was a society or a civilization or a superior species out there can we like think about them from an anthropological point of view yes definitely so what do you think like do you think they communicate like what we humans have been doing for a long long time with each other and i'm sure a lot of animals also communicate with each other the thing is our understanding of their communication is very limited as of today so can you tell me a little bit of what is there on the screen right now what is this tabloid or this tablet looking uh, like it's a stone or something uh this is uh, the egyptian artifact which is uh, popularly known as the rosetta stone uh if i am not mistaken on the rosetta stone there are there's inscriptions uh, depicting different different inter- uh, writings of in different languages it was a very key, it was kind of a keystone to decipher many of the ancient texts so it is very popular so this um, thing belongs to the egyptian civilization is what you you are saying i am not sure even where, before that uh, i am not sure which civilization it belongs to but it is a very important piece artifact and it helped the linguists or the archaeologists decipher and understand much more of our history so this is a source of history to us and this source a source of communication to the people who actually wrote on this yes yes they wanted to convey a certain points maybe about their civilization about their society to mm. whoever was reading it in that time as well as possible future yes yes so the golden disk that we have you know human kind has sent uh, along with the voyager will play a similar role yes if access by yes if there exists someone else it's like a time capsule it's like a time capsule so you never know the voyagers there are two voyagers yes, if yes. i'm not wrong that yes. percent and they have been traveling and they have almost reached the end of our uh, solar, solar system. system and the uh, voyager has escaped voyager 1 has escaped our solar yeah, system yeah it, it has escaped so <coughs> communication if we would if we have to think about as to how the aliens would communicate like either it could be phonetic or, or dance or dance dance you know uh, i have i was watching uh, richard uh, david attenborough no mm-hmm. david ba- attenborough's uh, birds of paradise and when they are meeting the birds dance so beautifully it's a lovely video i yeah. watched that as well so the aliens might be engaging in such uh, displays of courtship and all definitely if they are male and female definitely and uh, maybe like an octopus uh, or jellyfish they might uh, or the uh, they have col- they communicate through color visual 
something to visual i am mostly hoping or rather expecting that it this is something they follow to communicate because it would be such a visual delight to you know yeah. even uh, look at such a stuff but then uh, i'm not sure no one is no one can really see that such a thing would uh, happen but then i'm sure if there actually exist exists a species they definitely communicate with each other and yes. as you're saying it could be either phonetic or through dance, dance. and through visual yes. uh, signs yes yes so definitely if not that is there something else which you can think about on the lines of communication which you think could be a possibility uh we like through sounds yes through uh, sounds through sounds of frequency which are like the whales yeah the, like the whales like the whales do and whatever Dol- dolphins dolphins but that's again phonetic yes, yes. but i'm talking about sounds of those frequencies which are not audible to the human ear okay like the elephants like the elephants okay okay or there are so many insects who do that oh like crickets, crickets grasshoppers locusts so there could there is no uh, i mean there could be anything we have very limited yeah, idea yeah and uh, imaginations can run wild so if they are communicating with each other what do you think they are communicating about apart from obviously having a, a reproductive relationship or whatever what else uh would it be too much to say that the fl- uh, the plants communicate to us through color and flowers definitely i mean like uh, uh, it's much possible it's, it's much it's, it's a, very it's possible because the fruits are colorful and then when we see color we are attracted to certain things so maybe it is a form of communication maybe they communicate over a period of uh, years or maybe even centuries mm-hmm. can't say no yeah yeah basically human kind as we all know may have started communicating with each other as apes yes yes and over the time speech evolved mm-hmm. and you know it basically helped that man tamed fire and you know conquered fire and learned to domesticate fire mm-hmm. because the time after the time he learned to domesticate fire he could you know cook his food mm-hmm. if i'm not wrong yes yes and the amount of energy that went into digesting raw food compared to the amount of energy that went into digesting cooked food hmm. made a huge difference to man's thinking cap- capabilities okay, okay because that excess energy that was being taken by your intestine okay. now could be taken up by your brain okay and that helped for humans and man as we know today to hmm. grow intellectually and gain those cognitive qualities so when you think about such things from an alien perspective would there be a possibility of fire yes yes why not if uh, there is oxygen there But must be fire we n- we don't know if they survive on oxygen or oh. we don't know if they survive on methane oh. or you know nitrogen so there is so much so much uh, there is no limit to the number of possibilities that <laughs> yes, could actually yes. happen but then i just think uh, if there is heat then yeah. they can be uh, they can be cooking definitely so coming to the food part humans basically started settling down after they ended up discovering how to cultivate yes agriculture was a big revolution for the human kind so can you just tell me whatever you know about how humans started to cultivate and you know kind of evolved as a, a civilization in, in different places uh maybe the prehistoric man observed that uh, how the grain is uh, growing beside the river maybe perennially it is growing because of the availability of water and he thought to himself what if i scatter seed and uh, uh, settle down and wait for the grain to ripen and then i can harvest the grain and then i don't have to depend on uh, the seasons for my food also he he thought that he won't be able he should he, like the amount of danger that was involved uh, in, in hunting yes, and gathering in hunting so that kind of the risk came down as well yes yes and that also helped in increase helped him to increase his numbers yes 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 a settled life uh, changed the sociology of uh, human kind no yes yes definitely so food cannot i mean like it has to be your 
settled point of yes. any civilization. Yes, yes. So if there exists an alien civilization, their whole uh, ethos will be round, uh, revolving around their food. food. But then again, what kind of food? Yes, yes. That will be. <laughs> do they use salt? I would wonder. Or they just inhale yes. gases yeah, and yeah, 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 produce. Yeah, yeah. So they can. I mean, like. Who knows what? And it is so exciting. And uh, nowadays, uh, telescopes are becoming more and more uh, complex. And who knows what we might discover. We have a recent James Webb telescope that mm. went up into the skies. Mm. Basically, that telescope is trying to learn about our own origin. But yes. then you never know by learning our origin. <laughs> yeah, we might learn. You that. end up finding out someone else's yeah, origin. Yeah. Also. So, so many exciting things are happening in the uh, world as of today. But then, when you're eating enough, you feel hungry. Obviously, that's why you eat. Yeah. But then you're hungry about... Hungry of, I mean, like the hunger you have is also of different things as well. That comes, that 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 makes me uh, think about how do aliens reproduce? Okay. Because if we look at the life on this planet Earth and its origin, we kind of know that life originated to cyanobacteria. Mm-hmm. And that is how, you know, cyanobacteria uh, took help of water through which they could access few gases and they created oxygen yeah, yeah. which eventually led to the proliferation of oxygen throughout our planet and that is how life came up mm, yeah. when you think about aliens you cannot for sure say that they use oxygen yeah, for yeah. their survival yeah, yeah. so what could be the possibility according to you this is just yeah, wild yeah. guesses you can make some uh, people say that uh, high stress in the lakes, sulfur lakes and all gave rise to like during the daytime the temperature was too high and during the night it was too less and then some people say because of lightning strikes, some people say because of the ultraviolet radiation, so presence of water, you don't know which what led to the formation of life on earth and maybe entropy speaking of entropy what is the probability in all these millions of billions of years that those molecules would come together and form or would form complex dna or as you say so it is very interesting what might ha- what might happen on some other planet of, uh, millions of billions of trillions of light years away uh, what uh, how life would form because as we know there is something called cell division that happens yes. in unicellular organisms. Yes, yes. Amoeba does such a reproductive, I mean like it, it reproduces literally by cutting itself into half and yeah, the other yeah. half is a new yeah, yeah. organism altogether. Yeah, yeah. So imagine aliens, you know, reproducing in such a manner. Yeah. yeah. Could be a possibility, right? Yeah, yeah. And aliens could also be unicellular organisms. Yeah, yeah. Maybe some of the reptiles they grow appendages no if yes. they are injured yes, yes. maybe the aliens are like that way <laughs> maybe the appendages <laughs> just physical being all together yeah yeah and uh, mushrooms how mushrooms reproduce through spores I don't know if the aliens are that way maybe, or maybe the alien is a mushroom at times I even think that there are so many species yet to be discovered on our planet so yes yes so, are those species alien to us in a sense? Yes. It, imagine the uh, thrill of discovering a new species and naming a new species and uh, uh, studying it like what is its morphology, uh, genesis, its reproduction, its uh, food habits. And um, that thrill uh, that thrill involved in doing that science is amazing, no? But then, these are species which may be, you know, okay with us discovering them. Yeah. But do you think there could be a possibility of an alien species on our planet itself, <laughs> which knows about our existence, uh, but is very sure that we don't know about their existence and uh, has been continuously evading from being discovered? There was an episode in Doctor Who exactly what you have described it was portrayed in that episode I don't want to give any spoilers to you guys but uh, if you are wa- uh, hearing this or watching this p- podcast you might as well check out check on Doctor Who it's a fantastic uh, It's not. this is not a promotional uh, thing it's a fantastic uh, TV show and it has got a great fan following it was, it's wonderful you can check it out
So there could be a possibility is what you're talking about. Even yes, like yes. doctor would thought about that. Yes, yes. So are these, I mean, I cannot say people for them, but are these the things or organisms who actually fly UFOs out there? <laughs> <laughs> you never know. So there is a huge uh, subculture, uh, underculture of this UFO sightings and uh, UFO chasers and all. So it, uh, I do not follow this, but from whatever little I have read about this phenomena is people try and explain these things, and when people actually study this phenomena, they say that it's mostly a visual visual phenomena, uh-huh. depending upon light. you know refracting or interfering with something okay, okay. which comes out to be you know in a disc kind of a shape and uh-huh. you end up thinking that it's an it's a ufo okay okay so when i'm talking about aliens it's not only any species or civilization that exists somewhere out there i mean like millions of billions of whatever light years away but could also be a species that is thriving on this planet itself they're in the core of the earth core of the earth or whatever underwater <laughs> or you know could be a, even a superior intelligent species than us like the like i am coming back again to mushroom brain there's an organism okay in uh, uh, some one of the forests in america it is the largest organism t- uh, on earth Okay, okay. It is a mushroom. Okay. Oh. It's a, the mycelium is so huge. Yeah. Uh, so I have heard of this. Just, read something. Just recently. It just keeps spreading. Yeah, yeah. Could be. And the Japanese uh, scientists, when they were finding a best route for their trains, they put a fungus on the uh, on the uh, slide or whatever mm-hmm. when they grow, and the fungus found the best route. It grew. It, they put oats. on the uh, station so this is like fungus and humans having a symbiosis in your thing relationship <laughs> yeah. Yeah. something like spider man yeah, like we are depending on them <laughs> yeah, so yeah. we are gaining out of it yeah, it's yeah. like corals and zooxanthellae uh, i don't know about that corals basically thrive on zooxanthellae's uh, food producing uh, uh, capacity okay. that is how they grow okay. except from you know building uh, calcareous uh, rocks beneath them but then The, the the amount of possibilities and science as we know is not very old i mean like science as a as a discipline has been there for a long time but then even humanity as we know is not that uh, you know we are not very old species mm-hmm. it's yeah. only few thousand years old yes yes species. we are infants in the we are very infants because in the amount of time that we have spent on this planet and the amount of scientific uh, advancement that has taken place it's mostly in the last 100 years yes 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 things went exponentially up uh, in terms of discoveries and inventions that have happened in the last 100 years but then 100 years is too small a time to determine or to you know give a conclusion kind of a thing upon whatever happens in earth cuz mm. our discoveries and our capacities are still limited Uh, in that extent, that we have yet to explore much more than what we have already explored. Hmm. So my, when I think about aliens, yes, definitely there could be some alien civilization which is completely thriving on a different planet or a different galaxy altogether. But then I also think about lot of species that exist on this planet hmm. which are alien to us. Hmm. and then as i said there could be a species <laughs> which is trying to evade being evade from being discovered L- so L- like imagine the first time uh, someone looked into a microscope and found the uh, singers uh, those uh, microscopic uh, organisms yeah. he might be one wow he might have said these people also exist so that was quite alien to them yeah, yeah. and the first time someone found a virus pretty pretty much an alien thing to yeah. be here so there could be lot of possibilities to their reproduction so if they are reproducing they are they may be having families yes hmm? they may be having societies yes yes they may be having apartments <laughs> <laughs> not like uh, uh conventional sense but then you never know so if they have a society there must be a way to the society yes what do you think will they be like you know uh working like the bees can you just tell us what do you know about the bee uh, society and how bees 
corporate and you know like uh, the bee is a very sophisticated organism or a insect uh, it the the memory of a single bee is uh, it's like short short memory but the memory of the hive is more than that of a single bee mm-hmm. it means it, it uh, the hive exhibits a mind of its own okay. and when the hive uh, migrates from one place to another place uh, the work it sends some workers go first of the hive and then they scout for new locations and when the hive swarms it uh, displays it's like uh, many people dancing like the chinese video mm-hmm. of many people dancing together na mm-hmm. something like so that so so if i may quote a sociologist here like yes. emile durkheim who talks about collective effervescence wherein he talks about how he basically studied uh, uh, tribes and uh, tribal societies uh, in australia basically so he came up with this concept of how people how religion came up mm-hmm. and in that sense he talks about how people dance together mm-hmm. and how people vibe together and they get into some kind of trance mm-hmm. which he calls collective effervescence mm-hmm. so when you talk about bees can you relate collective effervescence effervescence with their behavior a little bit yes because uh, the hive as a uh, it it's kind of a super organism mm-hmm. even the ants display certain behavior like the bees mm-hmm. and even humans for that matter we form nations and uh, societies and tribes so uh, we dis- our collective behavior is different from our individual behavior and our uh, society has different characteristics which may not you may not look at an individual and uh, identify or associate that characteristic with the individual but as he he or she is part of a society and that society you might associate that trait or characteristic with that tribe or the society or that uh, collective body of uh, people mm-hmm. so if you are talking about a collective body of people or collective body of species uh, bees or a collective body of aliens, aliens. Aliens. So do you think there must be some amount of cooperation amongst them? Yes, there and, has to be cooperation. And if there is cooperation, there must be conflict as well. Yes, yes. So what do you think could be uh, the kind of conflicts an alien civilization would have? Will it be similar to what we have today? Like is religion part of their society? Or do they do they worship gods or do they have weapons? do they like do they marry each other okay. or what kind of marriages do they have yeah or it is like endogamous or polygamous no. or like monogamous or what like what do you think like there could be any possibility it's just about what you think and if you want to convey something on that if uh, alien species has to be successful and colonize the planets or the galaxy i think uh, marriage would be a very requisite uh, thing for it for the species to succeed because that kind of tendency of kinship bonds yes yes because and yeah that's my thoughts on it and uh, for a society to succeed there has to be rule of law mm-hmm. order and all so they might have po- some intergalactic police or, police or something like that way or uh, <laughs> do they have these exams entrance <laughs> <laughs> exams for their police recruitment <laughs> <laughs> like we have here in india uh, they must be having some uh, kind of uh, right of passage do they have coaching classes <laughs> yeah. right of passage they must be having na like how uh, how we have right of passage in our tribal societies mm-hmm. and all that mm-hmm. so something like that they must be having like uh, for a young uh, youngling to become an adult so some kind of uh, ritual so, or something like that so yeah. if all these things exist there must be some certain way to how the economy works as well yes and if their economy works in certain way do they own properties there yeah that's a fan- very interesting question the notion of property uh, whether oh, now i heard some uh, famous celebrities say that we on earth we can only own what we can grasp in our palms mm mm-hmm. so maybe the aliens are uh, altruistic beings okay maybe they or maybe they may be selfish beings you can't say what sure. do you think i, I would mean, want them to be altruistic do you think an alien society will would be an egalitarian society or like or, uh, or a society like we one we have today 
if they have to colonize the galaxy they have to be egalitarian but then isn't egalitarianism a kind of an utopia yeah. i do not uh, i let like let's come to this point does equality and the feeling of being you know everyone is equal it sounds great as an idea to me but yeah. then does these kind of things really exist in real life do people yeah, perfect, follow these things you can chase perfection but then it sh- perfection should not be the enemy of the good so you're telling me if it's an egalitarian society there would be communes in their society y- yes yes okay so there it would be mostly a communist society what <laughs> talking about <laughs> karl marx uh, et could be you know karl marx if you think about karl marx and then the kind of things he has said you know we just we have uh, taken a little bit of karl marx i mean like we have taken a lot of karl marx into our understanding of how the society works and you could very well extend that to the alien society because <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you're talking about karl marx uh, will there be a, a proletariat class of aliens who are being you know exploited by the bourgeois alien bourgeois <laughs> so there is uh, no limit to your thinking yes yes but i somehow believe that if there is a civilization which is equally superior or equally intelligent or even uh, equally intelligent or superior than ours there has to be some amount of conflict and if conflict exists it's bit, it's mostly between two classes or more than two classes mm-hmm. and when the classes come the classes develop in such a way in on our planet you know if you think of the human kind classes develop because one class learned how to appropriate profits mm-hmm. at the cost of the other mm-hmm. and that is how one class came to dominate the others mm-hmm. so if i'm talking from a alien point of view and if you're saying that there are societies of aliens and there is there are people owning properties and all there has to be some amount of conflict and mm. if conflict is there there will be classes <laughs> in, in an alien society so there will be an alien karl marx as well <laughs> so, <laughs> you really don't know but then this is all we can you know only imagine mm. is there anything else you would like to talk about on alien sociology or alien society or I would only wonder if uh, what is their notion of money like how they exchange their goods their trade their commerce their industry how they how it works whether they have totems iconography like whether, they, whether they have credit cards <laughs> 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 whether they have banks <laughs> banks oh, oh, oh that would be a whole different discussion okay we we started off with barter system yeah so i am kind of hoping they have this barter system with them maybe you know they could be even trading uh, their significant others for <laughs> 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 you never know yeah yeah but then there's a limit to what you can imagine and think about these things mm-hmm. and at the same time there is no limit to you what so if if the societies exist do they enter the entertain themselves Ah, uh, obviously, entertainment is comes natural. Even uh, uh, dolphins play, no. Mm-hmm. So definitely, recreation and entertainment is. Uh, I feel all organisms do it. Because leisure is something we should pursue. Yes. Despite the fact that a lot of people are not able to do that. Yes, yes. But then Netflix is our leisure. Yes. Mm-hmm. Like the most popular leisure, yeah. people want to chase and you know. So what kind of entertainment and art you think? Uh, an alien society would be having like do they paint uh paint uh, let us uh, if they thought some of the animals to paint no like uh, yeah uh, i have seen a lot of horses and elephants yeah. painting paint spray like you know uh, with a brush in their yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. mouth or uh, you know, in your trunks i've seen that yeah yeah so but why are we cl- comparing uh, animals with aliens you know yeah uh, it is uh, kind of limiting no yeah so i am yeah. thinking aliens are far superior than us yeah yeah 
because the age of the painting con- if you are talking about galaxies, a painting yeah. it should i'm not saying that it's a conventional painting wherein you are taking a brush and you know uh-huh. stroking the uh, maybe 3d time. painting also could be anything 3d painting or they might paint in time also who knows <laughs> <laughs> or imagine a fountain the uh, fountain is also a art piece no or uh, the kind of auroras mm-hmm. we have yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's, if i can put it firecracker show it's, it's a kind of painting to me yeah because yeah. the auroras that we have yeah, the in the pools. in the olympics they had drones to make uh, uh, this was that was a delight to watch that, that was nice so entertainment is not limited to art as in painting obviously because we have a painting picture here that's why we are talking about painting yeah, but yeah. it could be movies as well it could be songs it could be literature it could be dance it could be anything yes absolutely so if you can imagine aliens dancing and it's a form of communication only if yes, you definitely. so uh, we in india time capsule communication we in india have so many forms of dance yes, we yes. have bharatanatyam we have kuchipudi we have yakshagan we have kathak we have kathakali so do you think there are different dance forms which the aliens follow yeah yeah they hip hop <laughs> <laughs> if there is yes, a yes. similar society or yes. similar social yes, situation could be anything yes yes in what kind of movies do they make <laughs> shakespeare's tragedies kind <laughs> of or uh, if there are a space civilization they must be making they must be having festivals also on some planet definitely like yeah you know, if i don't know what for they eat but then i'm assuming uh, based on basing my imagination on the steven spielberg movie avatar uh so james cameron james cameron i'm so <laughs> sorry <laughs> <laughs> very limited knowledge at times so james cameron has shown a tribal kind of a nature of those aliens who yeah. live on pandora yeah so if you look at them they definitely are uh, celebrating festivals mm. they definitely have their totems their uh, what do you say the 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 clothing so mm. the clothing is also quite distinct and different yeah so could be a similar thing yeah yeah possible so what do you think like if aliens exist are they modern enough to travel between two planets or yes, or are they very this highly likely mm-hmm. because uh, the age of the universe is quite uh, uh, old the yeah, universe from what old. we know it's like yeah. 13.5 billion yeah, yeah. years so there must have been a civilization it might have ended also can't say mm-hmm. that uh, fed the galaxy what do you think if there is a different alien civilization will it be in our own solar system or somewhere far far away it, there is a high likelihood that in our galaxy we might find uh, alien life at the same time uh, we have not found that's the hu- that's why we are doing this <laughs> <laughs> Because there is so much of imagination yeah, running. Yeah. Maybe one day this podcast will be transmitted interstellar through some, some alien will some listen to this, <laughs> you know, translate our language into their language. Yeah, yeah. Either phonetic or not phonetic. <laughs> you never know. So, coming to the last part of this uh, podcast, what kind of science do do you think uh, the aliens may must be having? Like, do 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 they do they even call it a science? <laughs> they might be calling it mystic arts or alchemy or something like that way mm-hmm. or uh, if the civilization has to succeed they have to be disciplined in their scientific approach mm-hmm. because science has to be disciplined in order for the civil- civilization to succeed mm-hmm. if they have to be a space faring civilization and if they have to harness energy all that kinds of things they have to be conduct uh, experiments interpret results share their findings communicate document all these things are indispensable to good science do you think they have internet <laughs> definitely some kind of communi- uh, this uh, fast communication has to be there for uh, the collective uh, to uh, collaborate mm-hmm. i can only think of them communicating through Three roots, maybe. 
like like the fungi and yeah. the trees tree roots or the maybe uh, like what whenever i think about such an alien civilization a uh, lot of avatar movies uh, <laughs> scenes come to my mind <laughs> so that's quite obvious because that is the recent movie of on aliens which i have watched i have watched very limited movies on alien culture and alien life but then uh, is there anything else you would like to add to this podcast uh i would want us to be ambitious in the sense that i would want us to have a long term perspective on things like uh, there are some among us that who think 100 years 200 years from now and uh, we should not uh, sacrifice our future in order to have a uh, rosy present mm-hmm. uh, we see the sun is going to expand in the future mm-hmm. and we today or tomorrow we have to my uh, this jump ship to another planet mm-hmm. so there is no time for caution in mm-hmm. christopher nolan's words mm-hmm. so we have to make the best with our day we have uh, we cannot afford to be lazy or uh, complacent mm-hmm. in our day to day things each and every activity of ours should be directed towards a goal and it is better that the goal is for the collective good mm-hmm. rather than for uh, maybe short term gain or mm-hmm. maybe pleasure or something mm-hmm. like that way so whenever we pursue any activity we should think of the larger implications of it so in short do you mean you don't want the human kind to alienate itself from its own planet yes yes because the kind of things we have been doing in the last recent past it's kind of endangering our own existence yes 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 and it's it's coming at the peril of our own planet yes, yes so it's not outlandish if i see that in the coming future maybe in 300 400 years we may even cross planets and colonize other planets yes yes but that shouldn't be at the cost of today yes in present yes. is what you would want to yes, add yes. to this so with that note should we uh, end this podcast yes and it was nice uh, speaking our minds i hope you have a good good time listening to us and uh, seeing our uh, slide show and i'm happy to have this opportunity with my friend saurav and uh, saurav would be likewise i guess yeah definitely this is the first time we have been we have collaborated on something like this which is audio visual kind of a thing for us and it's always a great thing talking to you julian yeah thank you likewise uh, saurav yeah. and uh, if you would want us to talk on any topic please mention in the comments below or uh, uh, get in touch via email and we would love to oblige you and it would be our pleasure definitely and yes thank you very much thank you so much all of you for joining in have a good day see you next time see you next time